I like to think uh, on the traffic flow, vehicular traffic, crowd dynamics as uh, one set of problems that I can call intelligent groups. Uh, in these problems, we have large groups of uh, agents or entities, uh, but these uh, agents and entities are very different from the typical uh, physical particles of a fluid because uh, they can uh, take decisions and uh, influence the overall system. When you're driving, when you're walking, uh, you still are, say, a particle in the system that uh, really affects the system by taking decisions. Uh, this is distinguished very much from the classical fluid dynamics because their particles are somehow passive. While we know that when we drive and we walk, we take many decisions, turn right, turn left, accelerate, brake, so on and so forth. And so we are influencing a lot of the system. Uh, the main difference for what concerns my models is the fact that uh, for vehicular traffic, you are essentially still in a one-dimensional situation. That is, you have your road, if you neglect the lane changes, you essentially have the possibility just of regulating your speed. But that's the direction you have to go. When you are walking, you can go in many directions. You can turn, you can rotate, you can do much, many more operations, and so this renders the system more complex. Um, this is Starbucks, and we are sitting in Starbucks watching these four people come out of the station, and there's a crossing here and another crossing there, and they're kind of meeting in the middle. And the question is, what happens next? Humans move around in crowds very much in the same way that animals move in flocks, so that when you move in a crowd, you adjust your behavior. A very common ingredient in many of, uh, of the models that you will find in the literature is that interactions between individuals depend on distance. So what I'd like to focus on is a new ingredient, a new ingredient that we've been thinking about in our group. And that is that interactions between individuals also depend on the direction in which the individuals move within the various zones. Mathematics can be used for a lot of different uh, applications. And, and so when you're thinking about um, uh, birds moving back and forth or, or caribou ma moving back and forth, it's the same as cars moving back and forth. It's, it's the same as, as people moving back and forth. Um, those models look very similar to the models that we're looking at for animal communication. And so when, when you see that relationship, then you're gonna, wait a minute, you know, we need to investigate that more. And so that's the stage that we're at at the moment. There are a lot of systems that can help in this direction. Uh, one of the most interesting, I think, are cyber infrastructures. That are the situation in which you use a large number of mobile sensors. The Millennium Project of the University of California, Berkeley, is based on mobile phones. This uh, cyber infrastructure uh, achieves really large scales. I'm sure that many uh, traffic companies and city halls uh, are considering uh, flow models now to, to optimize the design of roads and this depends obviously on the specific choice of each single operator. But there is I think more and more the understanding that uh, mathematical models and uh, engineering tools are great help in uh, dealing with many public policies issues in particular transportation.